Can I ask you about how you uh, uh, promote or advertise the the businesses? Like I'm just thinking about real estate, and I mean, you look at some of the things that real estate agents are doing now, particularly in in you know, in capital cities in Australia where people are mad about real estate. You know, you've got these cinematic type videos. <laughs> They've got the the houses all dressed up. They've put a lot of work into it. Uh, and and they've got these really impressive uh, uh, videos. Uh, do you have? I, I imagine you have a prospectus of some kind. Do you, like, how do you how do you promote it? Yeah, I would say there's less style points in this business, right? Mm. The because it's less of an emotional acquisition for the most part, right? Like it has to make fundamental sense for companies to buy things. They're buying capabilities. They're buying access, like you know it's 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 slightly a different sale than saying like you know imagine drinking you know hot chocolate on the veranda on a friday night right so yeah. the product or if you will or the thing that's actually transacting has a slightly different approach now that to being said must be professional must be crisp clear concise but the substance of the narrative is more valuable than the form if you will mm. and so it's imp- we communicate to the to the prospective acquirers we have materials that we put together it's it in our space we found like the 100 page pitch book you just everything gets drowned out in and the the one page thing is far too brief so do we have a happy medium that provides kind of the high level overviews of all the things that are important we have data rooms that we support back but we kind of sequence or phase the sharing of information so that way we make sure people are focusing on the optimal or the key elements of it first but yeah so it's 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 clean it's crisp it's direct it's not as uh not as razzle dazzle as some other things but the goal being to communicate the narrative clearly communicate the value proposition clearly to the prospective acquirer and getting their attention because at a certain point you know, the trick in this business sometimes is that if we're representing a small company to a very big company, the hardest part of that dialogue is getting the first part of their attention, right? Mm. If we can get their eyeballs on it and they like it, well, then it it creates traction amongst themselves, right? Because now they're saying, well, well, this is interesting. We want to look at it. We want to learn more. And they have their own momentum. And at a certain point, they don't really care what I want to tell them. They care what they want to look at, right? And so they say, well, I want to learn more about this and learn more about that. So you can't drown them out with your own narrative, but you do have to make sure you're giving them enough, but not too much and get the attention. And then if the attention leads to interest, it kind of becomes self-fulfilling at that point. Gotcha. Um, and what if, say, I'm looking at a, I don't know, a plumbing supplies business in Milwaukee or something like that. Could I actually, and I'm a prospective buyer, could I line up a visit to the the, the sure. company's premises and talk to the management? At a certain point of the conversation. So we try to phase things out, right? Like yeah. you should be able to, if you are the plumbing supply distributor guy and you know this business right so we have to kind of validate prospective buyers so what's your track record what's your history what's your industry knowledge what's your financial capability to do these things and let's say you check out on all these things well then you really should be able to give an offer or at least a skeleton of an offer just based on numbers and conversations with ownership right and so there is a certain so only when we get to like a high level structure that you would you can at least put the iron on an, on the back of an envelope and that ownership can get on board with that we then pivot to you know whether it's an in-person meeting a facility review i think the problem with a lot of intermediaries is they allow too much access too soon and it's like you know this isn't a field trip right like we're not mm-hmm. looking to have like 25 people come around and kick the tires on things cuz yeah. it creates an environment of, of, of instability for the employees. It's, it's not good. Right. And so you really don't want to do that until you know, you have something and we try to push and it's a tug of war sometimes, but we really try to push things as far as we can before we're doing anything that could be a disruption. 